Setting different exposure modes is as easy as turning the top exposure mode dial, which is directly behind the main command dial. In this case, if I was to set it to manual, what you'll see is I have full control over shutter, aperture, and all the functions available in the camera. So here you can see I can change the shutter speed and both the aperture as well. And I can set the ISO, I can set the picture style, everything is available to me. If I rotate the command dial round to aperture priority mode, here what I can do is I can set the aperture. And there you can see if I rotate the command dial, I can now set different values. Notice that the shutter speed is no longer available, so the camera will choose the shutter speed on my behalf. But you will see I still have full control over things like ISO, picture styles and all the rest as well. If I rotate this round to shutter priority, here I can set the shutter speed. Notice there I can set shutter speeds. The apertures are no longer available, so the camera chooses the shutter speed on my behalf. Exactly the same as aperture priority, I have options to set picture style, white balance and ISO as well. Under the program exposure mode, you'll see here I don't have control over aperture or shutter, but I can control ISO, white balance, picture styles and all the rest as well. In scene intelligent auto mode, here pretty much all of my options are taken away for me. If I hit the Q button, here I can set different options on the drive modes only. If I was to set it to flash off mode, here pretty much everything is taken control of by the camera. And once again, the only option I really have available to me is the shooting mode. So if I push the Q button, there I can just set single shooting, continuous and all the rest. In the creative auto mode, most of the controls are taken away, but I can apply certain other settings as well. If I hit the Q button, here you'll see that I can now set different visual effects. These are essentially picture styles, so it really is just changing the way that color and contrast is being interpreted. If I scroll down to this option over here, it will then essentially choose an aperture on my behalf. It's just a very simple version of this. If I go down further still, here I can set the drive mode, and I can set the flash to either be on, off, or on auto mode. In the portrait mode, here the camera will once again take control of most of my settings and once again, if I push the Q button, I can set different visual effects on color and contrast. I can set white balance effects and I can set the drive modes as well. In the landscape mode, once again here, it's going to give you wide depth of field, so it's going to choose a small aperture by default. Once again, I don't really have control over exposure at all, but if I hit the Q button, I can set different visual effects, and I can set the degree of this effect, and I can set white balance as well. And once again, lastly, I can set the shooting mode. In the close-up option, here it's designed obviously for getting very close to a subject and it, it attempts to try and help you with uh, things like sharpness or more importantly depth of field. And here I can set, if I push the Q button, I can set different visual effects once again. I can set white balance settings and I can set the shooting mode. In the sports mode, Essentially it defaults to continuous shooting and I don't really have any other options available to me So even if I push the Q button, you'll see the only option I have is once again standard settings for color and contrast and white balance settings as well If I enter the scene mode here, I have three different options available to me So if I was to push the set or the Q button here, I can set different options to either night portrait mode, so here it's going to use a slightly longer exposure and probably fire the flash, handheld night scene, it's going to increase the ISO to assist me with low light, and lastly HDR, here it'll take three consecutive shots and then attempt to photo merge them, so blend them all together to try and manage things like color and contrast, or more importantly contrast, so bright highlight detail will be retained, so highlights will be slightly darker, and shadows will be lightened slightly. So it is a bit of a help with, uh, with high contrast scenes.